My wife told me, like, I said it was terrible, and she's like, she looked at me like, you think it's awful? And I'm like, do you think it's good? What's going on, everybody? We are back. It is Into the Geekverse. My name is Zach. This is, of course, my good friend. Phil. It's and nice to see everyone. Yeah, it's just us two. The last two weeks, we've gone, uh, we've had th three people? No, yeah. for the last three weeks, we've had three people. We had really? Seth. And then Tyler, Tyler twice, right? Oh, Have yeah, we had that's Tyler right. twice? You know yeah. He was twice. Yeah, so it's no, been pretty cool. Sense. Next week, we'll return with three people. Phil will be taking a break. Tyler will be joining us, and I think we'll be having a guest. Um, but this week, we have, I mean, there's just a lot to talk about. There's always stuff going on in the Geek First, whether it's in yeah. games, TV, movies, all this stuff. We're going to talk about Astrobot. We're going to talk about Beetlejuice 2. We're going to talk about the Penguin TV series. We're also going to talk about something stupid that I think one of the Sony CFOs said, oh, and of God. course the Minecraft trailer. But the big topic that we are talking about today is our favorite toys that became movies. Because so many toys, such as Transformers, this is mm -hmm. more in collaboration with Paramount because they sent us this awesome uh, lunchbox for the oh, new movie. Oh, that's so cute. I'm also see. wearing a Transformers it. 1 shirt. Uh, it's pretty badass, but uh, I got the chance to see the movie already i lucky ducky i think yeah I, I can talk a little bit about it on here uh i was oh, trying okay. to remember if the embargo was going to be up by the time this review or this podcast went up but it actually will be like i think the day of the day of yeah Ooh. so i i'm very excited but there's a lot of toys that actually have become movies and ones that i'm excited to talk about we're also going to just mention some other things in there but as of every week let's ramble yes uh phil how was your week it was good. I yeah. am super tired. Uh, this was like the first official week of like my real hydrox training. Nice. And yeah. Like I think Thursday, because I'm not a big runner. So like I ran like 4.8 kilometers nice. in nice. like 30 minutes. So I was like, oh. that's good, man. That's good. Yeah. I was just kind of like Ugh, tired. Uh, it's so funny because every time I hear about running, I just, I, I look back and I'm like, how the fuck did I do that in high school? How did I do cross country? I know. How did I do track? That, that was something that never got me. I like, I don't know how people ran for fun. It's not fun. I don't know who the fuck says running is for fun. I did not think running was fun. I thought the racing was somewhat fun because mm -hmm. it was a race. But yeah, I mean, sometimes I look back and I'm like, man, I could have kept doing that. You know, I could I could have kept doing that. Well, no, I mean, that's just like how I felt after like football mm -hmm. when I was like, uh, probably like my strongest just weightlifting wise i'm like dude i was squatting 450 mm -hmm. pounds i'm like man if i just kept up with it i probably could have done like strongman stuff yeah or but but that's the thing is like you get a little older you get all yeah. this you don't want to take steroids which is like what a lot of these people <laughs> probably do and you just live life and do what you need to do and for me yeah. it's like um like sometimes like I never took anything. I sometimes I wouldn't even take cross country and track as serious as some others would, but I always wanted to be the strongest or the fastest runner. And I wasn't, but mm -hmm. I, I prided myself on how fast I was. Like I loved doing the, uh, the 400 meter sprint, which was the whole lap. Mm -hmm. And that was always my favorite race because it was just a dead on sprint. That on sprint one, finish it. Yeah. For one lap. Uh, but it's funny because before when I first started track, they never did the 400 for me. They always made me do the 800 cause I was in cross country, um, which the 800 is two laps. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you kind of run fast the first lap. You're not dead on sprint. And then the second lap you're supposed to like basically dead on sprint it. Mm -hmm. And it was the worst fucking race ever. It was the worst race. You're basically just going all out for fucking two laps. Yeah. Then I was like, I got to do a 400. You guys can't make me keep doing this shit because it's just going to kill me. Yeah. And then they eventually switched me and it, I mean, it's been a blast. So do you remember your like fastest time? Yeah, it was the, it was the final race for my 400. They clocked me in on the relay at 51 or 52 seconds Ooh. for one lap. I can't remember. It was like either really close to 52 or it was like dead on just 52. Um, and that's what I wanted. Like that was the exact time I wanted uh, cause I kept hitting like 55, 54 and I just wanted that fucking 52 and my final race ever in track was a 52 somewhere around there. So oh, that's pretty good yeah. for the three miles though. Cause for cross country it was three miles. Mm -hmm. My best was 16, 56, maybe a little bit for lower than three that. miles, 3.1 miles. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. But that, that race I did it at was the coolest race because it was, uh, it was all at night. <clears throat> They blast music while you're running. Mm. It's they call it the Twilight Run. There's yeah. just, it's just such a different atmosphere. It's not 
that hard of a course. So that was like the one that most people always peaked on because it was just mm. such an easy one to like ride through and get through. So I don't know. It, it's cool. I'm surprised you never did track. Like not not the track part, but like the field part, like the shot put and the I, um, the discus. I actually did. What is it? Um, when I was in high school, our coaches forced us to do two sports. Okay. Um, I couldn't do wrestling because when I was a freshman, I literally got hospitalized doing it. Yeah. So. I got smashed on my neck. So my family was like, you're never touching wrestling again. Yeah. So when I told my coaches that they're like, all right, you're going to shot put. And mm-hmm. I would just go out there for like an hour, just throwing a giant ball and doing discus throws. But you never did like the, the actual competition of it. No, really? But they just made me go out there and practice it. And they're like, just join them for their warm up runs. That's <laughs> interesting. Like, yeah. That's interesting to me because I, I feel like you probably would have been pretty good with it too. Yeah, I mean, I, I I had a decent form. I wasn't yeah. anything good. At. Now, I know you've been playing Space Marine. You bought the special edition. Yes, so you can play right. it. So um, give me a little bit of feedback on it. Uh, well, we've already talked about we'll do a full review at the end of the month once yeah. I get to play it, and we don't have to rush through it or anything. Mm-hmm. So just like basic preview, how are you feeling on it? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good, honestly. Um, I'm challenging myself. I just decided to just start it on the hardest difficulty. Nice. So I'm just... You're just doing the uh, story? Yeah, right? I'm just okay. doing the story right now. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm just kind of like stuck in a spot early on where it's yeah. just like a really massive swarm. swarm. So I just kind of have to like grind it out and... How is the... Uh, have you touched anything else yet? Like the multiplayer or anything? No, no. no. Okay. I think it literally like force starts you into the campaign. Oh, okay. So, I like that. I like yeah. that though. I, I think more games should do that. So that way people play... Yeah, the campaign, but I think Space Marines is kind of a cool game because, well, I think this week in gaming is actually really cool because oh, yeah. we had Space Marine mm-hmm. and we have Astrobot, which are two games that are basically never made anymore. You yeah. have Space Marine, which is an old school third person hack and slash shooter that has three modes a campaign a pve mode and a multiplayer mode Mm -hmm. and then you have astrobot which i actually got mostly because my wife wanted it like i was just like i'll buy it when it's like 30 bucks but she's like can we go half half on it i'm like yeah it's like 30 bucks from me, 30 bucks from you i had two coupons for 15 dollars off so no yeah we i mean we got it for cheap i think it was like 40 bucks in the end of the day so um but it's cool that we're like living in this era where these games are coming out like mm-hmm. right now, specifically after coming out after Concord just failed. Yeah. Where that's like the epitome of what like people don't want really anymore. Yeah. And we now have a new platformer from PlayStation and we have a new throwback to action adventure shooters, which again has three different modes. Mm-hmm. Like most games come with like one or two or one, if anything. I mean, even look at like Dark Tide. Dark Tide's just straight multiplayer, right? Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. This is in Warhammer too. And like, imagine if Dark Tide had come with all this stuff, it might be, be a little cool. bit better. So, yeah. I'm not saying that Space Marines is going to be the thing that everyone plays for months on end. It mm. All depends on support, but for a sixty, seventy dollar game, that's fucking awesome to have. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I've seen a little bit of the multiplayer footage. I haven't touched it. The mm-hmm. The PvP actually looks pretty cool. It does look cool. And like, it's cross-platform, so like, yeah. we get to play too. Which is kind of crazy because like, um, I feel like they kind of hit the, the niche market of like, kind of like uh, how old games used to be where their multiplayer felt distinctively different. It kind of yeah. reminds me of like how when Bioshock 2's multiplayer came out mm-hmm. and how different that felt to other so games. Fun. It's so cool. And though. it was just like, it's fun. Like yeah. it definitely looks fun. I, I need to play it so I can't say it's fun yet. So. But it looks fun. I mean, yeah, it looks fun yeah. and it entices me to play. And I could definitely see it like actually being a, a game that stays and gets like updates for its multiplayer yeah and i hope it just pops off because if it pops off then that means we i think the game more i think the game will i heard people like i always go off like what are my co-workers playing and a lot of them were mentioning hey what's the space marine game have you heard about it i was like yeah it looks fucking cool yeah and if they're mentioning it that means it's somewhat appealing to the general going audience you know? yeah so i think that's really cool uh, do you mind if I talk about Astrobot a little bit? I'm not. I'll review it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I was gonna say like I only really have like 
a couple hours into okay. Space Marine too. It's just it's fun. The combat feels yeah. good. I suck at it because I'm just super new at it. Yeah. So I feel like a game journalist right now. Hey, that's that's you are a game journalist. You're yeah. a game journalist now. Yeah. But you're a journalist in in geekdom. I just I know that IGN is the pinnacle of gameplay journalism. So stop it. <laughs> uh, we don't we don't shit on other people though. I know IGN IGN they do good reviews. Which like I saw people were giving their Astrobot review shit because they give it a nine out of ten. Mm. And I like right now if I were to rate it like off six hours of playing. It's a nine out of ten. Like it's an awesome platformer. Yeah, I've... but it doesn't like like for there's not like a deep story to this. Like in the end of the day, it's kind of a a celebration of PlayStation's years, which is funny because it's their thirtieth anniversary is coming up. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like perfect timing. But Astrobot's awesome. Like I was really surprised by how fluid it is. Now I usually have the the motion like all the stuff turned off on the controller, but they recommend you turn it back on to play the game mm -hmm. and it is honestly a really cool thing um so basically it's like super mario galaxy for playstation mm. and you go to so you are in a spaceship at the start of the game where you're basically in a ps5 and you're with all your astrobot gang and an alien destroys your ship and basically says fuck you and t destroys your ship, it crash lands, and now your goal is to find all 300 Astrobots on it, all these different galaxies and save them and bring them all together and get your spaceship back in order, which is a PS5. So it's like you have to find the CPU, you have to find the GPU, you have to find the SSD card, mm -hmm. like you have to find all these things. And so I went through one big galaxy all last night, got 100% of the whole galaxy. Like that's how into oh, wow. it we were, yeah. Um, we wanted to find every bot. Um, I think there was only one one or two times where we had to look at a guide to see like wh where the fucking bot mm -hmm. was. And then like once we did that, we're like, we're fucking stupid. Like we're so stupid because it was like so obvious where mm -hmm. it was. Um, but like the bots are cool. Like it's, it's, it's entertaining to see which bots show up. Mm -hmm. Like uh, they had Castlevania bots in there. They oh, had that's really Metal cool. Gear Solid. And they had, uh, who else did I get? I got Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and, Ratchet and Clank. Um, I got uh, the Castlevania crew. They have Killzone in there. I haven't gotten them yet, but wow, Killzone's that's crazy. In there. They have all these different ones. They have uh, Crash Bandicoot's in there. Mm -hmm. And it's cool because we're in this like jungle area, and I see this box, and I'm like, that looks like the Crash Bandicoot box. Mm -hmm. And there's Wumpa Fruit leaking out of it. And I'm like, oh, we have to go hit it. So we found a way to hit it. Once we hit it, he fucking pops out. Oh, that's but the cool, cool is every time you collect an uh, Astrobot, it shows them going into a controller, but mm -hmm. your controller, when you're, you, you can motion it when they're in there mm -hmm. and it feels like they like laugh in there and it, the controller gets oh, a little that's heavier. Cute. The, it is, this is like the best way to see like what the dual sense can do. Mm -hmm. And it's so unique, but, uh, I, I love this game so much and my it, wife loves it. Like I'm, I'm going to be honest she, out of the six hours, she probably played three or four of it. That's and really I probably cool. played the rest of it. Like, um, and the only time I really jumped in was when it was like a boss and mm -hmm. she like could not figure out cause she's used to like, she doesn't know, understand the two dual sticks. Mm -hmm. So she's still trying to get used to like looking and moving. So like during boss battles, it's kind of, yeah, that's, that's hard. But ape escape, when you beat the first boss, you go to an ape escape Island. That's really cool. And it's, actually. and it's all ape escape Astrobot apes and, they're How much is it cool. again? It's sixty bucks, and oh, okay. I would say it's worth the sixty bucks for how much is like at least from what I've played. I've seen it's about a fifteen to twenty hour game overall if you want to completion it. Mm -hmm. But like this is a game that like I would show my future kids. I would yeah. have them play. Like it's so simple, but so fun, and it's like towards an era that we just don't have anymore. Yeah, you know, I was gonna say um, after thinking about it, and you mentioned Concord. I feel like we're finally well almost finally i would say we're starting to have a time where like video games feel like video games again yep in a way mm -hmm. like i'm like i know that the development and everything for sony's concord was like so much money and so much development time i heard it was like eight years eight years of development which and, makes sense because overwatch came out eight years ago yeah and so just like I feel like we're slowly getting W's for like gamers this time in, in this year because we're mm -hmm. finally companies are finally realizing that we love these kind of things and like Astro Bot exactly and, and that doesn't just go towards gaming I think that also goes towards movies because yeah. last year Disney had its worst year ever for film 
And last year it was just sequel after sequel after sequel and rushed and rushed movies where when the Marvels came out, it bombed. It was, mm-hmm. It's the only Marvel movie that's ever lost money. It lost more money than The Flash did, that's which is crazy, massive. And now you look at this year and it's like Marvel has taken like a, a, a step back. We're only going to release Deadpool and Wolverine and that's it. Mm-hmm. And we'll have a couple shows and that's it. We're going to restructure, look at what we have and fix what we have. And next year will be the time to tell if that actually got fixed. You know, is Captain yeah. America going to be good? Is Thunderbolt's going to be good? Is Fantastic Four going to be good? They look good, mm-hmm. but are they actually going to be good? And I think that is one of the, and, and that was actually one of the things like talking about Comic-Con this year. They didn't really talk a lot. Remember how like the f- last two years we went? It's like, look at all the next four yeah, that, years uh, that we have. That multiverse saga event at San yeah. Diego Comic Con. I think it was the first ago. year. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, that was like crazy because I was just sitting there when they showed us like the timelines yeah. and everything that they and originally even had. Even the planned. first year I went, that's what they did was they showed that timeline. And like it's kind of like mind blowing that like now that's not even really a thing. Yeah. Um, but I just, I remember I sat there. I'm like, wow, that's like, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And now they're restructuring and refixing. There's rumors that Blade's not going to be made anymore that's crazy. there's rumors that it, armor wars is not going to be made anymore again these are just rumors but honestly i don't blame them what yeah. do these have to go towards the story come back and bring the supernatural for the next phase it sucks marhasha ali probably will not be blade but that's fine like let ali go do other shit like yeah. let him go have fun and do other things but yeah like i kind of like that this year and specifically like last year it felt like movie studios and i think still this year some of them are still mm-hmm. learning it's like okay we're putting 400 million dollars into these movies it's like is that even worth it mm-hmm. and not not really like people got to get paid for sure but like when we're paying actors like fucking 50 80 million dollars that's insane like robert downey jr is getting paid rumor is 100 million dollars for both the avengers films Ooh. so 50 50 that's fucking insane not back end deals straight just 50 million dollars up front like that That's for crazy. me is insane but we'll see i mean gaming could be coming to a thing where concord was the shot in the dark that's like all right people do not want this yeah um, I, which I like hope. no it sucks for the developers yeah honestly those i always feel for the developers because they're the ones who put in the the yeah. hard crunch times the do you know what my goal the is crazy this like, weekend? work environments that they deal with yeah my goal this weekend is to find a physical copy of concord oh, and really? never open it that'd be cool bro they're selling for like 300 dollars on ebay that's crazy but like i i get it it's a piece mm. of media i think what sony should do though and i don't think they should just abandon concord if i'm being honest with you i think they should go back and make a story Make it make a story mode for it. They had all this story content they were gonna put into it, mm-hmm. but make an actual restructure it and make it an actual game, not just multiplayer. Yeah, do like an actual uh, and come, yeah, campaign. Yeah, and like shock people. I mean, you, there's been so many times where we've seen games come out and fail. Not as bad as this. I mean, this yeah. was bad. But like No Man's Sky came out and failed, uh, and then they came and now look, it's like one of the most played games. Um, I'm trying to think. There's a couple other examples. Yeah. Uh, well, like the big thing I think was like. They made these characters, right? Mm-hmm. And they just kind of swung out the gates and they're like, hey, love these characters. They're super unique. And it's like, why Why should I invest my time into them? Yeah. You know, like, especially if it's just like a multiplayer hero shooter, you well, know? And so I, I spoke with someone this last week on, uh, like, why the fuck are they just not, like, bringing back Resistance, kill zone, so Like, if they want a shooter, live service, why are they not just bringing these franchises back? Yeah. And they said, from what I have heard... Sony is trying to find we're known as the gritty dark console. All of our single player games are gritty and single like God of War, Last of Us. Like these aren't games that kids can play. Mm -hmm. Concord was aimed for young adults and teenagers and kids to play. And I kind of understand that it looks like Guardians of the Galaxy. Remember the remember the release trailer? We thought this CG trailer looks cool. But what's what is this game? And then the second they said hero shooter. Mm -hmm. You and me stop paying attention. Yeah. Like li- like that, I remember because we were playing Diablo. Remember, we were playing Diablo during that. Day. We were we were doing a world boss. Yeah, and I think we were just like paying attention to the CG. I'm like, Phil, this looks cool. Mm-hmm. This looks fucking awesome. And then what? Right afterwards, they're like, this is a hero shooter, and we're like, oh, like I thought it was gonna be like a, a four player co op, like Last of Us or not Last of Us, a Left for Dead type of game mm-hmm. in space. I'm like, that's fucking cool. That's fucking cool. All interest out the window. 
Hey, who knows? Maybe they'll pivot and steal the uh, Overwatch 2's campaign idea instead and make it a Honestly, skill tree. Can and I say something? Like RPG they should. Like. They should because Blizzard's fucking dumb. Blizzard's yeah. dumb. That that was a stupid thing to cancel because that maybe would have made me come back and play Overwatch 2. Oh, yeah. The same thing. I, I would have been fine paying $40 to do the whole story experience same. of Overwatch Because Blizzard, I mean, I know a lot of people give them shit nowadays. Blizzard's a great company. not mm. Maybe not internally, but like yeah. a great, like every time they come out with a game, usually World of Warcraft, look at how I, I am every month. I struggle to not buy World of Warcraft again. Hey, that's coming on Game Pass now, isn't it? No, it's not. I fucking looked it up. I don't know what, what ad you saw. So, it was not real. I was going to say, I'm like, I tried I'm looking pretty for that sure that was forever. like on the, I thought it was on the Xbox Facebook I think it was a page. fake Xbox page, though, that you oh. were looking at. Because I went through their Twitter. I went through everything, and I could not find a single thing. Now, if it did go... Because I canceled Game Pass. I don't have it anymore. Mm. I would think about bringing it back if they did do that. Because at this point, like, I just thought to myself, if I want to buy a game, I'll just buy a game. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like uh, Indiana Jones this year, I probably won't buy. I'll probably just wait for the PS5 version. Or mm. I'll do, like, a free trial and, like, beat it and then, you know, not renew it. Um, Starfield's add-on, I kind of want to play, so like I might if I just want to play it, twenty, thirty bucks. I'll just. I was gonna say Starfield is the only thing that would bring me back is that I saw the uh, Star Wars conversion mods. Dude, it's awesome. I don't know if you've seen that, yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, there's like an entire project of just dedicated to changing yeah. every single asset and like dialogue yeah, when it's done, to Star Wars. When that's done, I'm like, playing that's it. That's crazy. I'm just restarting. Like, and I've told you I like Starfield. I thought Starfield was a fun game, but. Phil, we got to get up to Geeked Up, where yeah. we talk about the review and news. So let's jump into this. Uh, right. I, I I know you probably didn't see Beetlejuice 2, but are you a fan of the original? I was kind of just a little I liked curious. the first one. It was super cute. Okay. You know, I was scared of the first one. I'm not shook by that. Because, there is scary um, imagery in there. When I was little, little, sorry, I was doing no, the no, notes for good. the time. Um, when I was little, the scenes where they go and like she sees all the undead people yeah. and their spirits are what their bodies are and when how they, they die. Died. Yeah. I was like, dude, that's scary. I like, I remember I had nightmares. I'm like, I hope I don't die mm-hmm. horribly. But I like <laughs> how in the original, like no matter what, and even in the new one, you can definitely tell this, you can tell how anyone died. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's a visual cue. That's interesting. But yeah. Beetlejuice two is here. I saw it. It's been out for a week now as this podcast is going up. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I gave it a C plus. Um, obviously, that's a seven. But if I if I graded it on our scale on this podcast, I'd go to a six. That's fair. Um, it's not a movie that's bad. Well, I think there's bad moments to it. Mm-hmm. But it's an entertaining film that as like a fan of Beetlejuice, I liked it. But it had too much shit going on. Uh, okay. And it feels like every character has a subplot. And every subplot is an interesting idea. The problem is none of them get fleshed out whatsoever. So it's like you have Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice's wife is coming back and wants vengeance. That's a cool idea. Her introduction to the movie is one of the coolest introductions to a fucking villain in all of 2024. I loved her introduction. Mm-hmm. Eh, guess what happens though? She kind of just she dies. That. Like after her introduction, she does like the same thing over and over. Then she finally comes up to Beetlejuice confronts him dies wow another storyline with jenna ortega's character kind of this a similar thing it's this whole big or thing but it's building 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 done oh uh, okay and then another one building building done like it just it I, and i understand like it's beetlejuice and i'm supposed to take it too serious but like the film does try to take itself a little serious at times and i like the messaging and theme about letting go mm-hmm. but the problem is it's just that so you think it would have done better if it was like a five part, maybe like a mini series? Honestly, no. I think the best thing they could have done is they have, because I'm assuming they're going to make another one. Only reason I say that is because this movie is projected to make $100 million. Oh, and wow. obviously we're filming this prior to the box office, but like Friday apparently was like $50 million already. Holy The boy. original movie only made $70 million at the box office. So... It's like now it's like it's going to make more money than the original. It's going to make its money back. And then it, we're going into spooky season. So now it's like it's just going to keep get, making money, you know, yeah. I assume. So I think we're going to a sequel. But some of these ideas I wish we would have just done. This is this movie's idea. The next movie, Beetlejuice's wife. 
or vice versa. Beetlejuice's wife in this one, then the next one. You think they uh, used all their all their cards? They showed all their cards. I I, I think kind of because I I don't know where you go now. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm not gonna lie. They kind of leave it open for a sequel, like a little, little, little bit. But mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you: Is there any childhood classic films you would like to see a sequel to, though? Like like Beetlejuice or something like that that you grew Iron up Giant. with? <laughs> I said horror. Oh, horror. <laughs> That's right. I mean, Iron Giant's like a childhood classic one. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, a lot of those movies were like really spooky growing up. Um, it's not a childhood or child movie, but like I would love to spawn. I thought oh, spawn, was, spawn would be yeah. fucking awesome. I, I want to spawn so bad. Another one. Mm-hmm. A Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. I just I I missed the. Would you uh, want another Nightmare Before Christmas? I always go back and forth if I'd actually want one. It it will never have like the magic of the original. I think. Yeah. But I feel like too many movies try to capture recapture that magic mm-hmm. instead of just like honoring its legacy. I agree. So I feel like if they shift that kind of mindset mindset, I would be open to the idea of like seeing. A continuation of the story of like Jack and Sally. I agree with that. that. Um, I want another Gremlins. Mm. I want another Gremlins. I love the Gremlins so much. I think they're so fucking cute. Gremlins is a good choice. Yeah. I like that. Like I don't really care for the second one, but like just to get them back would be cool. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see Monster Squad? Monster Squad. Where no, it's I like have not. it's like all the the main monsters coming together. It's uh here. I'll read you the synopsis. It's pretty cool. It's a fun movie. A group of 12-year-olds form a universal monster fan club called Monster Squad and have to attempt to save their hometown from Count Dracula and his monsters when they show up for real. So it's like Dracula, Frankenstein, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Is that new? Those. No, it's from the 80s. Oh, wow. It's a okay. cool movie. It's, I mean, it's cheesy and stuff like that, but like that's another one of those that I was mm-hmm. just like, I, I watched it once as a kid and I always like have fond memories of it. You know what I was thinking? Um, how cool would it be? Because obviously there's so many like theories about Tim's uh, Tim Burton's universe. Like his movies just yeah. being like in a shared universe and like how cool would it be to have that kind of like that connection? Yeah, to just acknowledge Beetlejuice it. versus Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> this summer we're getting Beetlejuice. But like how cool would it be to just see like Paranorman and like Nightmare Before that Christmas be cool. together and have like these clashing yeah. art styles in a way. Kind of like uh when I don't know if you ever seen it, the Nickelodeon crossover yeah, with Fairy Odd yeah, Parents yeah, and uh, Jimmy yeah. Neutron, Jimmy and Timmy's Power Hour, dude. Yeah. It's the shit. I love that. I fucking love that, Phil. You made it right. Um, but yeah, Beetlejuice too. Go see it if you like Beetlejuice. If you yeah. don't, don't waste your fucking time. I think it'd just probably be like a fun leisure movie, right? Yeah, like to be honest with you, like uh, me and my sister, like she's super into Beetlejuice. So like she dressed up in the red dress from Lydia D. I saw the photos. Yeah, so that was cute. And then she wanted me to wear. I told her I wasn't gonna dress up, and she goes, "If I just buy you a, a onesie." I didn't know what the onesie looked like, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, it's probably just like sandworms on it." Nah, like the whole fucking mouth. So I did it for her. It was whatever. Mm-hmm. It was fun. Um, next up, I got to see the Penguin TV series. Um, yes, please tell me. How did you like it? So I've been very excited for this. Uh, the Batman with Robert Pattinson is my personal favorite Batman movie. It's top five comic book movies for me. That movie was everything I wanted it to be. It was my most anticipated movie of all time before it had come out. I was just so hyped out of my mind for it. So I was excited when they said that they were making a Penguin TV series. Mm-hmm. And while the Comic-Con panel didn't get me more excited, there was things that they said that intrigued me, how they said that this series was originally supposed to be the first hour of the next Batman movie. But then there were so many details that they're like, we just have to make a show. And now with the series, um, I have to say I loved it. I thought oh, really? it was an incredible addition. It takes place a week right after the Batman happened, so the flood's kind of not as bad, um, but everyone's trying to recoup. And it's about how did this version of the penguin rise to the top? Because obviously when we see him, he's kind of just like a henchman, you know? Yeah. And it's fascinating to watch him. How does he climb to the top when the main mobster dies? What happens when his family comes into the picture and wants to take over shit? And I was intrigued all the way through. Certain things that I was kind of like, okay, let's see where this goes. This character is not really grabbing my attention, but how's this go? By the end, I was like so locked into their story. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of twists and turns and it's R rated. So it's like they cuss, it's bloody. That's um, cool. 
it, it take, pulls no punches and it's a great addition to the Batman universe. Do you feel like it's like a, like a gothic version of like mafia storytelling? Kind like, of, kind of. It's a little bit more uh, Sopranos than I expected. Like it definitely takes place. Like obviously the Batman takes place a lot at night. Mm -hmm. um, so that like out of all my issues, I only have, well out of, I only have one issue with the series personally for me. And that one issue I have is sometimes like the, and this might be because the episodes were not done. I will say that right now. I said, this is my full review. I'll say this right now. I got the whole season. It comes episode week to week. Mm -hmm. The first four episodes are completely done. The last four are not done in terms oh, of visual okay. effects, in terms of color correction. Oh, okay. So some of it looks a lot, a lot brighter. I can't tell if that's because it's just not done yet because the first four episodes will look a lot like the Batman, but it also takes a place a lot more at night where the last four episodes aren't afraid to go during the daytime. Mm -hmm. um, and it just kind of feels weird to see Gotham during the day. Yeah. But it's it's fascinating. And I think the way that the series ends, not like you have to watch it to understand the next Batman movie, but I think if you do watch it, it's kind of like you're prepared even more. Like yeah. just certain character levels, like certain things that they just sneak in right at the end that you're like, oh, that's a, that's a good plot point that, that they can put on later. Um but I love the series. Uh, in my my actual review, I would go a ten out of ten. Um, it's my favorite show of the year. I think it's the best show of the year. Um, take that as what you will. I'm obviously very biased towards the Batman universe that Matt Reeves has crafted and created. Mm -hmm. But for me, as someone who just wants the sequel, this is a nice holdover, and I was really happy to see that. But I want to ask you, what other villains do we want to see in this Batman world? Obviously, we got in Penguin, we got the Riddler, we got a version of Joker so far that we've only gotten hints of Catwoman. Yeah. Um, Salvatore Moroni is in the series, uh, so you kind of get a, another mobs. Literally, all the main mobsters in Batman are in this series. Like mm -hmm. for that, so that well, except Black. Uh, what's the Black Mask? Black Mask is oh. that his name? Yeah. yeah, he's not in the series, but like there's some other some smaller ones that I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I wanted to ask, like, what other villains would you like to see? Because Matt Reeves talked this week in an interview where he said we're never going to go into the fantasy realm of Batman villains. We'll maybe push it. But if we can't make it realistic, you'll never see them in this world. Gotcha. So I was about to mention uh, Freeze, Mr. Freeze. He got asked about that one time. He said, I think we could push it. And I agree. I think you could do Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze is personally what I want to see next. I think yeah. Mr. Freeze works so well for this world, like just in terms of the grittiness of it. Yeah, I was going to say. And plus, he's also like, he's a villain with like... Um, sympathizing like motivations a lot of the time yeah. it's about his wife and like mm -hmm. trying to figure out a cure yeah because the next film they said will deal more into the because you know how the first <clears> one kind of <throat> opened up the corruption of gotham how corrupt is gotham actually yeah they said the second one's going to dive deeper into that so you know what it instantly went into the back of my head court mm -hmm. of owls uh, i think they're absolutely doing court of owls that'd be a good choice you want to hear my batman 2 pitch hmm. i don't have like a full idea of what i would want it to be but I would want the villains to be Court of Owls, Hush, Clayface. Obviously, you can't do the mud guy, but yeah. I think you could do someone that like skins people's skin and wears it or some shit like that. Yeah. Um, Robin. And did I already say Court of Owls on mine? Yeah. Okay. So you do these ones. Sure, you bring back Riddler or Joker or whatever. But the whole plot line is... Because I, I, the penguin, that that's another thing. I can't tell how long it's been, but it, clearly it's been a while. Like there's a time jump at one point and then I was like, it's clearly been a couple weeks. Yeah. In terms of like what he's done. And this takes, apparently Batman part two takes place directly after this. So I would say during this, this whole ordeal, he meets Robin somewhere in here and Robin joins him because he needs help. Obviously, you know, it's, mm. it's villainy everywhere and i would have robin join him and in this you know you have hush you have court of owls that you're dealing with and then um uh, clayface clayface is another murderer going around doing all this shit working for them and then diving into the corruption of gotham city it's like you just find out that like most of gotham city is the court of owls but i would not finish the court of owls in here i would say they are set up more they're mm -hmm. intrigued like who is the court of owls and you're finding it out through all these different elements by the end of the movie robin dies by the Court of Owls, dies, leaving us to a part three where he comes back as Red Hood. And mm. I think we get a Red Hood, we get a, and the Court of Owls finale. And I think that's what I would want to see from the Batman. Yeah, almost like a re of like the mm -hmm. killing joke, right? 
Yeah, and maybe Joker kills him. I mean, who knows? But I, mm. I personally, for me, I would just leave it as like change it up a little bit since this world's already so yeah. changed. So, um, yeah. Any other villains you'd want to see, like them try to pull off like a a, a realistic take on? Freaking just Mister Freeze. I, I for some reason I have King Shark in my head. Like, how cool would it be? Like, and it's just much more of like uh, an alias or like maybe Bane. Bane, okay, I so like, I would like Bane. I, I would pitch it as like Bane having that like very luchador yeah. feeling and having his gang be like a rival gang to like um, Penguin. I That's like how that. I, would pitch I like it. that. You know who else would be really cool? I think if you want to do like a rival gang scenario, now I can't even remember the fucking character's name. His face is like I'm like viewing Black his. Mask. No, I, no, I don't. I'm not really a big fan of him. Um. Fuck, man. Who was it? He's in one of the Arkham games. Hugo Strange. I would like to see Hugo Strange come into this since Arkham's already a part of it. Remember, he's in Arkham City. He's like the the psych. Why are you smiling? Because I never beat the Arkham games. So I have the entire trilogy. I need to play those. <laughs> I'm about to start a segment where I'm going to make you... I think we've talked about this. Yes. Where you have to play a game and you have to beat it. Yes. Because at was, this point, I don't believe that you'll beat Space Marine 2. What do you mean? I don't believe you'll beat it. I'll beat it. I do not believe you. I'll beat it. I do not believe you. What was I'll, the last game you beat? New. New game? I don't remember the last new game I did purchased. Did you beat Bounty though. Hunter? Bounty Hunter? Yeah. Actually, no, I did not. Okay. I'll... I'm like at the last few missions, like the last. Will you two, ever beat it? Up. Will you ever beat it? Oh yeah, I will. This year? Yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah. I, I got I, distracted I, by Path of Exile, so I was like, I, I I genuinely do not believe you. What do you mean? I don't believe you. I, I don't, don't believe. Finish. I don't you know believe what, you um, finished these. The first time we started the segment, I finished Metal Gear Solid Five. You finished Phantom Pain. Yeah, I finished Phantom Pain. I liked it. Okay. Okay, so. may- maybe because that was that the one I told you you had to beat. Yeah. Okay. That was because I restarted the campaign because I got like yeah. 150 hours into it, and when I like took a break, I just took a Bro, long hiatus. How years. bad is the fin- like not the finale itself, but you know how you have to grind to get to it, like all the mission repetitive because yeah. they just fucked him over at the end with the budget. Yeah, that's uh, that whole thing is just like. Like, obviously, you could blow through the campaign if you really want to, but they really incentivize you just, like, doing all these missions, mm-hmm. missions, which is great for, like, replay value. Dude, the graphics for that game are so good. I still think that's, like, the best, like, video game, video game. Just mechanically, oh, it feels fair. so good I mean, no, 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 no. I agree, like, on that part. I think that's just Kojima. Like, Kojima just knows what the fuck he... Like, that's why, like, I'm really interested to see what he, what he does with Death Stranding, too, mm-hmm. because I'm a fan of the first one. But I completely understand that, like, it is. N- I will never replay it. Let me put it this way: I will never replay Death Stranding one. But I loved my time with it, even though it took me eight months to beat, mm-hmm. because I just it was a hard game to get into. And once I I would come back every few weeks and do a couple missions and just try and get to it. And then it came a point where I finally hit like it's just all story, and I fucking fell completely in love with it. But I'm like, does he pull off kind of like? does he pull off one of those sequels? It's like the first one was like a prototype. Now the second one is like, yeah. exact. and I think we're supposed to see gameplay for it in a couple of weeks. So that it'll be cool. That'd be exciting. Cause the PS five pro is supposed to be announced soon. So mm-hmm. I think they'll announce it with it. Cause that's their big game for next year or yeah. one of their big games. Cause I, I heard another rumor how they, uh, how they are. Um, a lot of PlayStation has not announced a lot of new stuff because they're waiting for the play- PlayStation pro to be announced. And then all these studios will announce release dates. Wolverine, the Spider-Man DLC, Ghost of Tsushima 2, stuff like that. So speaking of Sony, uh, the CFO said something stupid this week. Um, He says, Sony doesn't have enough original IP. Whether it's for games, films, or anime, we don't have that much IP that we fostered from the beginning. Now, I... I don't know the con the full context of this, so I don't know if he's just talking about like, oh yeah, we don't have like Crash Bandicoot anymore. We don't have, you know what I mean, like the ones that they started out with. Mm-hmm. But I think to say that they don't have enough original IP again, I don't know the rights issues. Maybe there's like yeah. rights issues with some of their games or something like that. But like, I think this is actually one of the dumbest fucking things that I've ever heard. I, I think just on a surface level. Yeah, on a surface level, 
I think it's just like his frustration with the fact that like he doesn't have his own Fortnite life service kind of game. Exactly. Where right? like that's where but like here's the thing if you wanted to do that you have all do you know what someone pitched they said why did they make concord when they could have made a playstation hero shooter everyone would have bought that oh yeah that instantly even if no one knew how the game even if it was just a hero shooter live shooter no one i would have paid 40 bucks for that yeah to play a hero shooter with all the playstation characters that that'd be pretty cool, actually. Like, imagine just being Crash Bandicoot and just doing like a spinning old yeah. tour, and then like having Jack and Daxter and like being that'd able be to, and cool. then being able to switch into the, like the light or the dark mode. Like, I'm like gonna <laughs> go fucking crazy. Like that right there, I would fucking I would have paid. I would have paid sixty bucks for that, and it would have been easier too because it's established characters. You wouldn't have to convince nope. the audience because nope. play. And I don't know if they're afraid because like PlayStation All Stars didn't do great. But it also came out at a time where like people were not buying that game. If you came out with PlayStation All Stars yeah. today, and it's good, people are gonna buy it. Yeah, I was gonna say like with uh, multiverses, uh, Nickelodeon All Stars, mm -hmm. which that game, the second one was actually really good for Nickelodeon All Stars. They they made it so that way like all the characters are voiced in that one too, yeah, right? Yeah, the They're, first one didn't have the voices. So. Yeah, but like, I definitely think like All. I, I think maybe it is all stars that makes them get cold feet about something like that because yeah. well like it came out during a time where the best things that were around were Call of Duty and gritty like Gears of War right yeah. so no one really cared about having a Smash clone back yeah. in that day but that's why I'm saying like and then nowadays hero shooters can't thrive because I think Marvel Rivals is going to do it really good mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually like again if the support is there I think it's going to start great but if the support's there it's just going to keep garnering especially because they said every hero after release will be free you know what i'm actually excited for huh. um since you're not a pc guy is uh deadlock no i i, I am excited for deadlock yeah, that's I was from gonna Val. Say, that game um, looks cool i i saw something i don't know if it's true or not but it was like a photo of the, like the steam charts it's a closed testing yeah they did they haven't even like publicly announced the game it has a hundred thousand players it, it's an officially announced now because it just kept getting leaked. Yeah. But, like, that's cool to me. But, like, again, Sony doesn't have enough IP bullshit. You yeah. guys have are sitting on so many IP. You have Resistance. They just, you have Killzone. You have Infamous. And you have all these studios that, like, even if Sucker Punch doesn't want to make another Infamous, Pat, Pit, ask studios, do you have a pitch for any of these IPs that we have? You want more kid-friendly stuff or, like, more things like that? Bring back Ape Escape. Bring back fucking um get the rights back to fucking spyro no one's fucking doing it you know they, yeah. they just canceled the crash bandicoot 5 at xbox and it was gonna be crash and spyro that's crazy bring i never it knew back. that yeah they just that came out this week too bring it back bring it back what the fuck do you remember that game where it's crash and spyro working together no i never yeah knew. it was on the game boy it was the purple or orange and it was spyro and crash's world or crash and spyro's world Oh my goodness. And it's an amazing game. I love that game as a kid. That's like a repressed memory. I think I remember a little yeah. bit about that. Actually. Um but like that's my thing. I just I think this is a dumb, dumb, dumb thing to say. Yeah. And I, but what you said about the live service, I believe that that is why they said it. But there's games they can use to do live service. And again, yeah. Sony, I'm literally asking I don't know who said this on the internet that they should have done a PlayStation Hero shooter. If you do a PlayStation Hero shooter, I guarantee it makes money as long as it's good. Mm -hmm. Cause trust me, you d you come out with this, it's free to play or forty bucks or whatever. But that first battle pass has Deadlock uh, Ratchet in it. I'm buying it and I'm gonna grind the shit out of it because I love that skin. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just that is the easiest thing to do. You could have Medieval in there, the skeleton. Oh yeah. You could have uh, Nathan Hale from Resistance. Like I'm trying to think you of. You could like, even put Nathan Drake in there too. You could have Nathan Drake. Yeah. You could have Chloe. For you have so many fucking characters. You have so many characters. Like endless amount. And then think about it. You can do collabs. I have, think they're just like. I could think you imagine have. if they got? Oh, I'm trying to think. Like I, I don't know. Let's say Halo ends up. Halo multiplayer ends up going to the Sony console to celebrate it. They have Master Chief. That'd be pretty cool. That's fucking cool. And then that's the announcement. Oh, this sh hero shooter is also coming to Xbox. Oh, that's yeah. like it hey. is 
pr- I'm printing you fucking yeah. money. Sony, get get a hold of us. Well, <laughs> uh, dude, I'll just come in and I'll tell you. I don't know any of the physics or the technological aspects of it, but I will tell you what characters to put in there. And if you tell me they can't be in there, I'll be like, why? I think it just really comes down to is that like these companies are having such creative stagnations because yeah. the people who greenlit these kind of projects truly at core i don't think they are gamers or like no no it's a lot of studio heads that's why i think nintendo succeeds because all the higher ups i think are gamers i think yeah they definitely like either they they don't play their product but they're so passionate about it that they know about their product and uh, exactly because every time i hear an interview from someone at nintendo and they're very um protective of their properties too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that Mario movie took them forever to make because that live action one sucked back in the day. Yeah. You know? So, and I'm not saying that movie was the, the animated movie was the best thing in the world, but it was definitely safe. It was a safe film. Yeah. That's like an actual kid's film. Yeah. You know what I think will be a kid's film though? Hmm. Minecraft. Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about this trailer? First off, do you think Um, it's going to be good? I don't think it's going to be good. I, I feel like a lot of movies try to appeal for the fact that like young adults love animation and like yeah. they try to cater for too much. Um, I think when we grew up watching a kid's movie it was like really for kids and there was just like something tangible for like parents to be like, oh, you know, yeah. they said a funny joke that kids don't get, yeah. but they do. But I feel like now it's like, oh, we got to make it kid friendly, but we got to appeal to the to the young Disney kids. I agree. Um, I have been very so this movie has been in development, fuck, for like eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, it was originally supposed to be made by Rob. Um, I can't remember his last name, but the guy from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He was going to direct it. He wrote it. Everything. Oh, okay. And then Warner Brothers canceled it. And I heard his idea was, I don't know the exact specifics, but I heard it was phenomenal. I heard it was so well written. Steve Carell was going to play Steve. Um, (laughs) I think it was more animated. I know it was still live action to a certain degree, but I was very interested. And then this movie got announced. Um, I'm not familiar with the director's work, really. Um, Jason Momoa, Jack Black, I like them, obviously. I I like the um, the main, um, some of the other main cast as well. And... A couple weeks ago, I saw a leak on how the film was going to look. And I'm not going to lie. I looked at it, and I'm like, I actually like the style of how this looks. Mm -hmm. I know it's not old school or blocky, but to some kids' imaginations, that's how Minecraft might look to them. Yeah. Um, So I'm okay with that. Um, It's just a texture pack, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But as someone who really liked Minecraft as a kid, watching the trailer gave me some nostalgia. Now, when I watched it again, after I did my trailer reaction... Uh, the, the humor looks like shit. Um, yeah. and I will say a lot of people are saying, oh, is this like Jumanji when they get transported? No, it is not Jumanji. Yes. They get transported to a video game world, but it, this is like a secret universe. It's like an alternate universe for them. Gotcha. Um, one of my friends leaked out what it was, a three C films. Shout out to you. Um, and then Jason Momoa looks so weird in it because he plays a retro game store owner. Oh, okay. So, like, certain things, when he started pitching, like, what it is actually about, I'm like, yeah, it makes a lot more fucking sense, like, what Mm -hmm. this is. Um, And Jack Black plays Steve, who has been stuck in this universe for years. Gotcha. So, does it look good? No. Does it visually look cool? Sure. Yeah. Is it going to be good? I don't know. I have to see another trailer, I think. Yeah. Because this is a teaser trailer. It doesn't really say anything about the story. It didn't really sell me. No. But I think if you give me another trailer that intrigues me a bit more Mm -hmm. maybe maybe it's maybe it's just you put out a bad trailer first and then you know but we've also seen how many times where you watch a trailer like talking about transformers one the first trailer sucked first trailer was awful yeah and then all the clips we saw at comic-con were awesome and i saw the movie i was like that's fucking amazing so like it could be one of those you know do you think um in a way like how people were saying like superhero fatigue do you think like when you see a lot of like these a-lister celebrities in a lot of these films do you feel like there's like a fatigue to that too that's a good question that's a really good question um i think it depends on you um i think if you're tired of their shtick and depending on like what their product is if their product's good Mm -hmm. you might not get annoyed of it i know some people have said ryan reynolds is a little bit annoying to them now 
But I also can say this, like, I'm not annoyed by him because I like his shtick. I like his movies. Free Guy yeah. was fun. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine was awesome. You know, I like that stuff. If was cool. I liked If. I thought that was a cute movie, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason Momoa, a little bit different. Um, he doesn't have the best movies. You know, I love him as, a, as his persona, yeah. but I hope his movies are better. You know, I, I think that's what it really comes down to. Yeah. I think it's not so much of like on them personally either. I think it's more of like these movies. I f- feel like they try to bank on the fact that they the celebrity. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what I mean more of like that celebrity fatigue. And, and that's, and that's it's fair not think, like, yeah. Oh, it's not just army of the dead. It's army of the dead. And here's David Bellista. Yeah. Dave Batista and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, like, and that, and that's, that's true to a certain extent. I think it really just always comes down to is the movie good yeah is the game good is the tv show good because if it's good great awesome then you're not fatigued you know same thing comes down to superhero movies i think when it comes down to superhero fatigue is like when we have four movies in a row of superheroes that suck yeah then we're like i'm just so fucking tired of it or it's like not amazing anymore you know Mm -hmm. remember how every marvel movie used to be a fucking event and now it's like, did you go, you, you talk to someone right? Did you see the new Marvel movie? Eh, nah, not really. We're like everyone, no matter what it was, Captain Marvel, fucking Guardians of the Galaxy, whatever, they'd go see it because mm-hmm. they had to know what was going to happen next in this whole entire universe. Yeah. So fatigue is an interesting thing, but I think it just comes down to, uh, and I've always said this, mediocre. People are fatigued of mediocre shit. Yeah. A big thing, you, you say the celebrity thing. How many times do you put on Netflix and you see on the front page new movie starring Zac Efron and all 40 other big actors Mm -hmm. then you watch it and it's not good. Most of my least favorite movies this year are Netflix movies. That's great. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. That's why I don't review a lot of Netflix movies because I know I'm probably not going to like it. Their shows are different. I think their shows are usually pretty good. Speaking of shows, Arcano. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so it's getting so close. I'm so excited. November, man. November. I know. But yeah, like I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the generation that we are in. Maybe it's also just because like we watched Borderlands recently. That was another one. When I just sit there, I'm like, oh, Jack Black's in another video game movie. I think that's literally what it came down to. Where I'm like, okay, Jack Black's in another safe video game movie. That's about it. Yeah. Hopefully he's better in this one. But let's get to the main topic, man. Our favorite toys that became movies. This is, of course, in celebration of Transformers 1. Show off that lunchbox one more time for me, Phil. Look how beautiful that thing is if you're watching us on the video podcast. Uh, It's cool. I like it. Now, I have seen the movie. I loved it. Top 10 of the year right now. It's fucking phenomenal. Starts off fun and kitty and gets real dark real fast. And seeing how Megatron becomes... Megatron actually heartbreaking like I don't know if you've ever had actually I know know you have if you've ever had one of those friends and I'm talking to the audience that you used to be so close with and then they just went down a path that wasn't the best could be drugs could be hanging out with the wrong crowd could be just violent for whatever reason it could be it could be family issues at home could be their own choice to do these sorts Mm -hmm. of things if you've ever had someone like that, I'm not, I, and I'm Transformers like one actually gets pretty deep into this. Mm-hmm. It is heartbreaking to see from a distance your friend changing. And that's what I love about Transformers one because from Optimus's viewpoint, the whole movie, he's seeing his friend crack and change into someone that he shouldn't be. And realistically as the audience, we understand why he's changing because yeah. he's been betrayed by his own heroes that he looks up to. Yeah. And when you see this transformation through the whole movie, it's phenomenal. The action, incredible. The visual, the the animation, phenomenal. It is, it's a funny movie, it's an entertaining movie, and it's an emotional movie. It is the best Transformers movie ever made. And I'm so happy that we're going to be talking about our favorite toys because Transformers were toys that I grew up playing with. I don't buy them anymore because they're fucking expensive for a piece of plastic. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, the Transformers movies, I mean, whatever you want to think about them. Uh, there, some of them are fun. Some of them are 
god awful, but that original Michael Bay Transformers movie was like my whole entire childhood coming to life. Oh god, yeah. And then like going back and looking at Transformers One now, this is like this next generation's version of Transformers, mm-hmm. like what most kids will probably be introduced to with Transformers, and I think that's really cool. Yeah. So what about you? Like, um, mentioned like I mentioned Transformers. Did you grow up with Transformers as well, or I grew up with a lot of Hot Wheels. Oh, okay. And I don't think they've done a movie yet, but it's been announced. Oh, really? Yeah, I think they've done animated stuff, but I don't think they've uh, done a movie yet called mm. Hot Wheels. But yeah. Hot Wheels is a big one. I think that would be cool. Like, can you imagine? A, I pro- I'm i sure they probably couldn't do like a Cars ripoff, but I think it'd be cool to just like have that experience of like fast cars and yeah. just crazy tracks. Mm-hmm. And um, I just... I loved playing with Hot Wheels, just making my own tracks and making them as long as I can and putting them down my stairs. Oh, yeah. Stairs and just like trying to get it so that way it goes fast enough to do like the loop de loops, but not so fast that it just breaks off the track. And Dude, you're like, do you remember the Toy Story scene when he jumps on the Hot Wheel and like goes around and like, flies? oh, yeah. Okay. I tried that so many times as a kid with my Buzz Lightyear, and I'm pretty sure that's why he had so many scuff marks, scrapes, everything. Um, Hot Wheels is a great one. Um, one that I didn't personally get into, um, but I know a lot of people did, is Dungeons and Dragons. That was a big thing kids were a big fan of. And the new movie, Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Us, was, or uh, Honor Among Thieves. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Did you see this one? I can't remember. Uh, yes. Yeah. What do you think of it? Dude, it was so good. It was like a 9 out of 10 for me. I loved same, it. Same. Like, I, I, it is one of those movies that I love. Like Sometimes I'll just put it on in my house and just like have it play. And then like, I can just tune in at any time and just like be entertained. Yeah, it's just like a fun movie. And there was like some fun cameos too. Uh, what's Bradley Cooper's. Yeah, Bradley Cooper's yeah. cameo was just like so funny. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was... Uh, there's not many movies that just like take fun no. much anymore. No, and, and that's like one of those that's just fun. And Lego Movie, speaking of fun, is mm. also really fun. I, did you grow up with Legos? I did. My brother used to do stop motions with oh, his really? VHS. That's so like, cool. With the camcorders. Yeah. So I remember I would sit and I would watch. My dad used to have like those model boats, like the ones that you could yeah. put in a bottle. And my brother would like take those boats and he would make like pirate stop motion things with his Lego. Like, yeah, with that's his so cool. So I remember I would sit there and I'd be like, what are you doing, Daniel? And he'd be like, look at this. And it's like a 20 second clip of him doing like a little pirate scene. That's so cool. So I love that. Any other, did you do any other Lego sets or was like Legos not really your thing? It was never like Lego sets. It was just like random Legos. Oh, okay. really? See, that, that's kind of how it was for me. I just like, I remember I'd get a box and I just put it in a fucking bin. Yeah, and then I would like somewhat build something else. Yeah, like uh, if what I remember, I think I got like a set that I tried to do with my dad, but I was just like too impatient. Yeah, and just they're a lot, dude. I mean, they're a lot. I yeah. have a lot of Lego sets right now that I still have not built. Um, did you ever get into Bionicles though? Bye. dude. So that so that is a movie because remember the movie. Do you remember the Bionicle movie? Yeah, the Bionicle movie and the Golden Mask. Yes, dude. Dude, Bionicle's lore goes so deep. Bionicle's (laughs) is fucking amazing. (laughs) And if they brought it back today, I would buy them. I would buy them and collect them and build them. Uh, I think Bionicles is like such a... Remember the tubes? Like you go to Toys R Us and they have them there. Dude, remember all American rejects move along with the Bionicle Mm -hmm. stuff? That's what got me into all American rejects, man. Yeah. I, I, I love that. Man, uh, I'm, I'm thinking what else. I mean, obviously, like, T, TMNT. So that one's interesting because uh, my mom was asking, like, what was the topic we were going to talk about today? And I told her that. And that started as a comic. And then it got toys. Oh, okay. So it's it, it's interesting. But, yeah, TMNT is a big one. I still collect TMNT toys. Yeah. I, I, I'm so mad because I can – I have TMNT toys from when I was a kid, and I cannot find them. I do not know where the fuck they're at. And I know for a fact I never sold them. Mm-hmm. I know for a fact. It's like – they have to be in a bin somewhere in my, in either my parents' house or like the house I'm now in. Like I, I just, I don't know if I just moved them and I just never, but I've never, Noticed. I know for a fact I've never sold those things. That's crazy. So, but I love TMNT toys. I never really got to uh, get many of those toys because they always came with like the, the slime. Oh yeah, yeah. That was their whole like pitch mm-hmm. back in the day. And my parents were like, no, you're not getting slime. I'm yeah. Like, Why the, not? The, it's funny now because now they don't come with slime and it, but it's like fake ooze. 
Like, yeah. It's like plastic ooze. Um, another one, uh, I, I didn't know this was a toy. Do you know Mars? Remember Mars Attacks? Eep, op, 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 like the yeah. Mars. Do you know those were toys back in the day? Really? They started us toys? Yes. That's crazy. And I love that fucking movie. Eep, op, op, op. Dude, I got no, no, scared. No. Talk with me like that. Eep, eep, eep. Yeah, that little laugh. <laughs> I love that movie so much. Um, I remember I was I little. Another movie made by Tim Burton, by the way. Is that Tim Burton? He made movie? that movie, yeah. That's crazy. Holy shit. Yeah, dude. I remember I was little and the scene where he like shrunk the person and stepped mm-hmm. on him. That like mortified me as a kid. <laughs> I don't blame it. I remember as a kid it used to scare me, but now I watch it and it's just fucking funny. Yeah, it's just good. It's just good. I love that. I might, wa- I might watch that today. Yeah. I might put that on. I think I own it. Um, another one, and just to give it, I didn't play with these. I don't know if you did. I, I doubt you did. Uh, Barbies. Um, the Barbie movie. Pretty good. Surprisingly good. Hmm. Um, you mean the most recent one with Ryan yeah, Gosling? In the yeah, movie? yeah. I'm not talking about the animated ones. I'm talking about that one. That okay. that's an IP. They took it from a toy. It made it like actually pretty deep. Yeah, I mean the whole Barbie Heimer, the Barbie Heimer marathon thing was like such yeah. a. It was so iconic. So I loved it. Um, I'm trying to. Th- I have another list. Uh, Battleship. I hate the movie, but I love the game. Board Battleship, Battleship looks pretty good. Um. Oh, Not the movie. okay. So this one, yeah, the movie's fucking ass, which my <laughs> wife told me, like I said, it was terrible. And she's like, she looked at me like, you think it's awful? And I'm like, do you think it's good? <laughs> <laughs> Your first Excuse real argument. Excuse <laughs> me. Not, nah, I, I shit you not a majority of our arguments, not saying that they're like real arguments, like where it's going to end our relationship, but like our arguments come from fucking movies and TV That's every funny. fucking time or gaming. So, like, to just kind of go through it, like, so gaming comes from the fact that she hates that every controller has two sticks now. She fucking hates it. We play the six, we play the Nintendo 64. I whip that shit out. She's fucking pro, pro gamer. That's funny. PlayStation 1, pro gamer. Anything else, the twin sticks? Nope. Nope. We play It Takes Two. She fucking screams half the time because it's just like Mm -hmm. uh, TV, though. We we argue about TV shows. Like, I'm like, you would love this show. And she's like, I want it. It's about serial killers. You watch everything with serial killers. Like, I, I think you'll like Game of Thrones. And eh, I probably wouldn't. Why? Why? Eh, just from what I heard. <laughs> Movies. Now, if we disagree on a movie, it's it's like, n- like, like Hereditary. Have you seen Hereditary? I have not. I om- I tried making my wife come on today because I, <laughs> but she she was tired. Um, Hereditary. I hyped up as the scariest movie at one point. And this is before we were dating. And I was like, you have to go see it. And she she went opening night. And I went to bed. And I get 7 million text messages from her. This movie was ass. This is the worst movie I've ever seen. I laughed my ass off throughout it. This girl got her little head. Or this little girl gets her head cut off in the movie. And she's like, I laughed my ass off at that part. <laughs> she's just going off. And this is a movie that like I told her I was like, I think if you rewatch it, you'll like it again. Because, like, uh, then Midsummer came out, and Midsummer is also by the same guy. She goes, I want to see it because everyone's talking about it. And I'm like, You won't like the movie. Why? Because it's like hereditary. It's weird. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. Took her to see it. She loves it. What movie? Midsummer. Midsummer? Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm like, There's no fucking way that you like mid. You love Midsummer, but you do wouldn't like hereditary it blows my mind but yeah so battleship was like another one i was like i'm not gonna get into this like <laughs> it's whatever it's a fun movie like remember uh when she told me her favorite transformers movie too that just remember that movie that came out that just tried to be like a big franchise i think it was called battle los angeles yeah but that's one that i think about when i think about battleship it was just like kind of the i kind of low-key kind of liked battle los angeles though. i did too <laughs> it's not a good movie but hey, i, I played like, the game like i forgot the game i like yeah, that game they, do you remember the area 51 game as well oh yeah i like those, those seven, out, seven out of ten games seven out of ten games going mm-hmm. back to our discussion on the last podcast um so another thing i want to I, I just want to briefly mention as well gi joe's used to love playing with them as a kid same with snake eyes and all that i hate the fucking movies though so i don't even want to shout them out um do you like any of the gi joe movies i think i watched like the i watched the first one and i think that was about it okay all right so next thing i want to talk about is we've also like while discussing this there are movies that we that get toys that we love 
um, or just in general movies about toys. So first off, Small Soldiers. That's right. I want a sequel to Small Soldiers so bad. I want two things, actually. I want someone to make a sequel to Small Soldiers, and then I want someone to make me the toys from Small Soldiers. Actual size from the film. I want those as toys. I would, I would, I'm not shitting you. I would spend two grand for I'm all the Gorgonites. They have like cheap ones, and there's people on like Etsy that will make these, but it's like $1,000 per one. I yeah. just want some company to come out and make me an Insaniac. That's th- about this tall. That's like the normal size. I would spend three hundred dollars on that. Can you imagine if they did like a Hot Toys with them? I would shit my pants, Phil. I would. Shit. <laughs> and if it came in the the box, I would never. I would buy two, so I have one of the box and I have one out of the box. Oh man, they they would get a sucker out of Dude, you. Dude, they would. They I would be sucking it. I would be sucking it <laughs> because I I love small soldiers so much. I still have some of the toys, but I want the actual ones. And it's funny. So every year, my my wife asks me to put like a Christmas list together, and so her Christmas list always has Insaniac on it, like eBay listings for Insaniac, the Burger King toy. Why? I don't know. It's like <laughs> the one toy, and it's funny because I could buy it any day now. Mm. I just never like buy it, but I'm like, yeah, I want that. <laughs> and then she'll tell me every time it's, it got sold. I'm like, okay, find another one. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I love small soldiers so much, man. Like I'm sure you do as well. Yeah. No small soldiers was like the, the peak of like, I guess just like fun, like toy movies too. Like, uh, I think that also just came around the time where like toy story was like so big for us kids and then just like having these like a live action kind of interpretation and then it goes wrong wrong which is like super cool and just like the whole uh gorgonites thing was just like awesome awesome. yeah it's it's a cute movie dude so fucking great so i i love that um another one toy story i mean that's like the pinnacle of toys becoming life and getting a movie um and I love Toy Story. It's my favorite franchise of all time. It's my favorite set of movies. I just, I adore it. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to talk about as well, before we get into if we do get any viewer questions, because I forgot to ask and I'm asking right now. Uh, so we'll see if anyone uh, responds to me. But um, let's talk about our favorite toys that got their own video games. Um, I think the classic one is all the Lego ones. Lego Star yeah. Wars, Lego Indiana Jones, Lego Pirates. Do you have like a favorite Lego game? Did you ever get into them? Uh, I liked the original like trilogy that came out for Lego Star Wars. Yeah. I think that's when I was like super. Did into you play those Skywalker games. Saga, the new one? I have it. I just I haven't started. I'm be honest, it I was yet. a little disappointed in it. Really? I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't like. I really wasn't like I. Yeah, I don't know. I like the original stuff more. I I actually went back and replayed two of the other ones afterwards, and I like those more. So. Oh wow. So, but yeah, I mean, that's a good one. Um, my favorite was actually like, and I thought it was underrated, was Pirates of the Caribbean's Legos. Oh, the okay. Video game. It was cool. Um, I didn't even know they did that. Yeah. Uh, another one, Army Man. Do you ever remember playing the Army yes, Man game? I have. Uh, I remember I played a lot of the PS1 version and like the yeah. PS2 early. There was like an Army Man game. I forgot what it was called. There was quite a few for the PS2. There was one that was like a top down isometrical mm-hmm. where you played like a covert up like agent green soldier guy Mm -hmm. and then um there was like sarge's men or something like that for the ps2 which was cool it even had like a zombie level which was like crazy that's cool that's cool i dig that uh transformers war for cybertron is like the gears of war transformers game uh uh, cynthia surprised my wife see she surprised me one time uh she went to bookman's with her sister and she came home she goes i got you a game and I looked at him like, holy fucking shit, you found more for Cybertron for 20 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> and then they had a fall for Cybertron too, right? The the sequel? I think it was oh. like fall or fight for war, something like yeah. that. Yeah. That was cool too. Like I, those games are so good. There's rumors it's coming to Game Pass. That'd be 60 cool. 60 frames per second. And I was like, oh, because the multiplayer cool. was cool for that fucking Yeah, game I like too. the fact that like they made the maps so that way you had to be in a car or mm-hmm. in your Transformer. That, that was another game. To that, like traverse. Yeah, that was another game that had a story multiplayer. I mean, it's like Space Marine 2 going back to that decision. Yeah. Any others for you? Let's see. The the Green Army Soldier games were like the big yeah. one that just like really popped in my head. They made a recent one that like came out a few years ago. Uh-huh. And it's like... Um, oh, is it that toy soldier game that's on? 
like PC where you like bust out of the box and it's like multiplayer. Have you seen that? Oh yeah, that's uh that's what's it called? Hypercharge or something yeah, like that. That yeah. game looks cool. Yeah. But no, this one came out, it's like an officially licensed like Green Army Man soldier game. Mm-hmm. It has like only twenty players online at a time now. But it it was cool back in the day. I mean, yeah, it like had maybe at most like a hundred players or something. But it was like it's a fun third person, silly arcade shooter, you know? Well, I dig that. Well, Phil, to end this off, we have one viewer question because he got it in before we were stopping this. And that is, oh, before we get to this, guys, let us know what toys you like playing with. Yeah. Movies and what toys do you think should get their own movies or video game? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, So what cameos? This is from Slice Dude one. What cameos do you want to see in Secret Wars? Secret Wars. Oh, my goodness. The Avengers movies. So. Um, I don't know if I exactly want cameos, but I would actually like them to be like significant characters for the most part. Yeah. Um, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is one, I think is the obvious. I want to see him interacting with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. I think that would be cool. Yeah. I think just like having anything mutant wise would be good. Like, could you mm. imagine just like really establishing the X-Men? I'm really sold on X-Men now after 97. I dude. it. That's why, like, when he said he didn't like it, I'm like, you're fucking insane. Yeah. Like. Like, the the whole themes and everything that, like, X-Men 97. It's deep. It's, it's deep. Yeah, it goes deep. And so, like, could you imagine do you actually see, like, seeing, older, like. Do you want to see, older? Because I don't think we'll get new casted yet, but I'm curious. Do you think we'll see some of the older x Men's come back, like, again? Like, I think we get like, beast. Like, uh. Like Professor X and Magneto and those. Yeah, I think like those are like established characters that just like need to come back. But I would love to see like fresh castings for them. But that's what I mean. Like for Secret Wars, do you think we'll get actors like the original actors who played them in Secret Wars? Then going forward, it's new actors like this is their final hurrah. Goodbye. Maybe. Yeah, I could see like Nightcrawler and everything Mm -hmm. getting him's uh, the original actor coming back. I mean, I would just love to see Channing Tatum's. Gambit. Yeah. Ooh, I'm going to make a name can, for myself. Yeah. and But, like, I would just love to see, like, an established relationship between, like, him and Rogue. I thought oh, that whole dynamic I mean, Gamb- was... Is it Gambit and Rogue. Yeah, 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 Gambit and Rogue. Okay. Yeah, okay. like, seeing that just, like, that kind of relationship and dynamic was just, like, super cool Bro, in X-Men 97. When he dies in X-Men 97... I know. I'm that, like, like, fucking destroyed me. Like, I know. that whole... That was the that is my favorite episode of that entire show. And the whole show is like great, but like mm-hmm. that episode was like incredibly well made. Um I'm trying to think of what else is there. Um Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider, I think is a big one I want to see in there. That'd be cool. I think that would be cool. Uh He's I, just so up to doing anything too. Yeah. I feel like it would just take well, a phone call they, to just convince Cage to come back. So in artwork that released for Deadpool and Wolverine he was fighting in the background. Oh, so really? I don't know if it was scheduling or they just decided not to do Ghost Rider. But yeah, so in the 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 artwork they had, it was Ben Affleck's Daredevil, Elektra, Blade, X twenty three, Gambit, Ghost Rider, uh, Deadpool, and Wolverine. That's crazy. And it looks fucking cool, and it's all them fighting all the different versions of Deadpool. That's really cool. So I the, we live in a world where that one day that might have happened, but I think I think that's something that does happen. I'd be pretty Mm -hmm. surprised. I'm trying to think of who else because there's been rumors that they casted Ghost Rider, but they just haven't announced it yet for the MCU. Yeah. And it's rumored to be Ryan Gosling. So I'm wondering, like, do they introduce him there as well? Um, Like, what's that perspective? But um, if they don't get Ali as Blade, like, overall, I think it'd be cool to just kind of have him in Snipes, like, in Secret Wars, and that'll be it. Yeah. Um, Anyone else? I'm trying to think. Go back. Go back in history. I really am. I'm digging deep in my brain right now and thinking. Huh. We mentioned Daredevil. We mentioned Thomas oh, Jane's Punisher. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple, all the Punishers. Every all Punisher with John. Yeah. That'd be cool. Could you imagine like yeah. them all getting together? Mm-hmm. And especially like they. Mm, another one. Uh, Tom Cruise's Iron Man because he was originally supposed to play Iron Man back in the day. Oh yeah. And I think that would be really cool to just one and done. Have him be, you know, in there. Everyone was like speculating that he was going to be in a multiverse. Yeah, I honestly thought they were going to do it. Do you know who else was supposed to be in it? But it, uh, scheduling conflicts with COVID just didn't work out. It was Daniel Craig? He was going to play Balder the Brave, who is Thor's brother in a different universe. Oh, okay. Maybe he comes in. Maybe they, they had him everything. He was ready to go. That's crazy. I think that would be cool. Or maybe you just have him play a different version of Thor. Mm-hmm. 
could work. Um, I'm trying to think. Cameos, cameos, cameos. I don't know. There's a lot. Yeah. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you guys so much as always for watching. This is Into the Geekverse. I think this is episode 10. Yeah, it So is. as long as for this. I mean, we've been now doing it since like what? May? Mm -hmm. I think so. And it's been a blast. So I love getting to hang out with my friends, talking geeky shit. Yeah. Phil will be back at the end of the month where we're going to go over the rest of the year and see what's coming out. We're also going to review Space Marines then. And, yeah, uh, there's a lot of good video games coming out. Yeah, Space Marines. A lot of movies too. And I'll, yeah. I'll cover the movie side. but uh, We're finally hitting the, the gold mine of gaming, I feel like. So. Yeah, dude. It's fucking stacked. October, dude. I was like looking at my October schedule. So for video games, it's Diablo first week. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero the second week, Black Ops the third week, and then Dragon Age the fourth week. That's crazy. That's four big triple A games. Getting some kind of like crazy thing. Yeah. That Diablo expansion actually looks good. I don't know if you saw it. They they did that Diablo 2.0. So I haven't watched anything for it because I just want to be like surprised. Yeah. But I am so excited for Diablo. Yeah. They changed a lot. So we need to reach out for that one. What, for a uh, vessel of hatred? Yeah, we need to reach out for that. Yeah, I, I would love to do that because I that's, think... That's your job this week, too. Yeah. That's your job. Yeah. I, I've heard a lot of cool things, so... Fuck yeah. Well, guys, this is... I'm Zach. I'm, I'm Phil. And we are going to be getting out of here. Stay geeky, everyone. Be great.